So welcome to Pentecost Day. For those of you who may not be a part of a church rhythm, the day of Pentecost is celebrated each year, 50 days after resurrection, time when we can come and say, God infused the church with his spirit. It is a day of marked note. It was a Jewish festival, the festival of the first harvest. So everyone was gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the festival, and on that day, God acted with power and might and strength. And as we allow our hearts to be filled with the Spirit today, let's pray over this moment. Lord God, guide us, direct us, lead us. May we feel your presence in our midst. May this room shake with joy. Come, Holy Spirit. Come not only to this church, but to every individual in this place. May we know your presence every day. We give thanks for your great love in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, they were gathered in that room, and a time when they were 11, they had chosen at this moment as they waited, waited for what Jesus promised, the Spirit to come, that they called Matthias to fill the seat for Judas. And they waited. You can imagine what was going on inside of the early followers' lives, knowing the trajectory of the moment that they had been on. For they had heard Jesus say when he was among them that they would have peace. They knew Jesus commanded them, as it's recorded in Matthew 28, to go to the far corners of the world and preach and teach and bring other people to know who he was. They knew the promise. And they would know, as Peter would say in this majestic sermon we heard a bit from, uh, the piece of Acts chapter 2, that there would be a moment when God would reveal to them that they were witnesses of these things, witnesses of the moment that God was bringing to them. And so as they gathered in this room together, I would imagine there was not only expectation, but you know as a human being with expectation comes fear because there's still the unknown. They had gone to the University of Jesus. They had studied long and hard at this wonderful teacher. He had claimed them, identified them as his followers. He had brought them to this moment in time where they, as the followers, would now be called to be the ones to lead and to teach and to proclaim. They knew what he said in the Great Commission. They would know that they were to be witnesses of these things. But if doubt crept into their souls, who could blame them as human beings? I know, I know, they had seen Jesus' death on the cross and the empty tomb, and the resurrection moments afterwards. They had had majestic moments to lean into. God had done phenomenal things in their midst. But now they're alone. They're by themselves. What if what was going on was really just a dream? What if in their human psyche they had made all of this up? I'm sure as the days passed, as you can imagine, when something is expected to come and you lean into it and you try to figure it out and you say as a human being, is it really going to happen? Is it really going to come? Is it going to be? And so who would blame the early followers if they had that doubt, if they had that fear as they waited for the coming of the promised spirit that would lead and guide them? I have to believe that you and me who are sitting in this room today worshiping God, I'd have to believe that there are probably too many moments where we are sure of what we do know or don't know. And we know the hymns, don't we? Even when we have a rendition like that last one was filled with joy and a little jazz orientation. 
We know the scripture stories. We hear them. We teach them. We know when Pentecost comes. We know to wear red. We know to come into this room. We read our scripture. We might even go to Bible study and be a part of a small group. We know. But what don't we know? Do we really know that we have been called by God into a place and a time to be agents for him? Is what we hear in this room and what we proclaim on Sunday morning lived out in our lives on a daily basis? Do we live in fear? Because we don't know what we do know. It's interesting when you dive into Pentecost and you begin to see what is promised into Pentecost Day It's a coming of an advocate, a helper, a guide. As Jesus leaves the earth, the moment of the third participant in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells among us. And it does not come for just one day, but it comes for every day. In the midst of this room, the Holy Spirit is present, leading and guiding every one of us as individuals. And as the Holy Spirit guides this church, great things can happen. So what is the promise of the Holy Spirit that is made by Jesus in the Great Commission or or this moment where we hear it come to us in the first chapter of the book of Acts? As we hear these words that come from Jesus into our midst, that we will have this moment where we will be witnesses of these things. So he says to us, but you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit when he comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so there are three major things that happen. One, we are called into a community of growth, by Jesus calling on us to say the Holy Spirit's coming into your midst, that you and me, as people of God, we are called to grow. That means change. That means rearrange. That means think new thoughts. And the human being that I know I am, and you probably know you are, or the person sitting next to you, or the people you do life with, we don't like change, do we? And so God's in inquiring of our hearts today. Are you willing to grow? Are you willing to change? Are you willing to find this moment where the Holy Spirit comes to you, wants to change your life and make you the vessel he created you to be? Growth comes. Not only does growth come, but power comes. It's the fuel that comes into our possession if we lean into it. Paul proclaims in the book of Romans that the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. I just want to stop my message now for a moment. I want you to kind of go into a a human thought crucible inside of your brain and your heart. Every individual in this room has the same power inside of them that raised Christ from the dead. It almost sounds too out of this world, doesn't it? It's kind of like one of those blind, mind-blowing moments that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is living in you and you and you and you and you. And the question is, will we grow in that power? Growth and fuel. And what does also the promise of the Holy Spirit bring to us? It's a calling, and it's the calling to be sent ones. That we're just not to take this power and this new knowledge of the Holy Spirit being present and put it into our own human crucible, but we're supposed to go, as Jesus said, to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And you can, you can make those uh, stopping points any place. First one, obviously, we're sitting in Naperville today, but it could be Aurora, it could be Oswego, it could be Downers Grove. You're to go to Chicago, you're to go to the whole country of the United States, you're to go to North America continent, you're supposed to go global for this thing, and you're supposed to be the ones who have grown, who have the fuel inside of you to do what you need to do, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, 
And you are called to be sent ones. Now, that, that seems like a big, huge agenda for any human being. But that's what Pentecost does when we allow Pentecost to open up our hearts to new life. When we were in Jerusalem, we went to the upper room, the upper room where Jesus celebrated the Last Supper. And while we were in the upper room, it, it's made of marble, it's beautiful. I was hoping for like a Rembrandt kind of like a Jesus table before me. It was just an empty room. And our guide was helping us to understand what was around. He pointed to the stairs and he said, uh, those stairs lead to a room where they believe Pentecost happened. And right away, you know what I asked? Can we go there? And he said, the door's locked. And the door's locked because they're still doing some archaeological work, uncovering some things, trying to prepare it. And, and I was like really disappointed. The Pentecost door is locked? What are you, crazy? <laughs> and, and so as our whole group was leaving uh, the room to go to our next destination, I was kind of lagging behind. And Idolin knew that. <laughs> <laughs> and like I was going to get in trouble by going up those stairs and checking the door. <laughs> because beyond me, Pentecost doors cannot be locked. Have we locked the Pentecost door? That's a good question that I think every one of us as a church has to ask. Do we use this moment as a church celebration that happens yearly? where we sing to the praises of the Holy Spirit, we hear of the first day of Pentecost when phenomenal things happened, and Peter preached this off-the-rail sermon of God's guidance that those who call in the name of the Lord, they will be saved, reaching back to the prophet Joel and bringing him, have we made this just a day? A check the box. A moment of, in time where uh, it just happens and we move on to the next thing? Or are we willing to grow on this Pentecost day? Are we willing to receive the fuel that God brings to us on this Pentecost day? And are we willing, most importantly, to be the sent ones that God has called us to be? This is an activity. It's not a mental game. This is not just a spiritual change of your heart, although that's important. This is a get up and do moment. And so I would hope that each one of us, as we take some time to think about what happened on that Pentecost day, that we might be challenged by this day to do what God wants us to do. Be sent on his behalf, growing in the nature and knowledge that he has given us the fuel to do just that. So what happens on Pentecost Day? Well, the door is unlocked for every one of us who wants to step in. As I look back and listen in on Acts chapter 2, I begin to understand that there was fresh wind that blew on Pentecost Day. Fresh wind. It was a spirit that was present question that I ask all of you, and I ask myself this on a regular basis, has our life become stale? Has our relationship with God become rote and predictable? Are we going through the motions, or are we allowing this Holy Spirit to shake things up, to bring us new life, to bring us opportunity to see things differently. When fresh wind happens, our still predictable lives change and they rearrange and they grow. And yes, once again, that's the thing we do not like. We don't like to change. But if we are going to unlock the Pentecost door today, we need to be open to change because that's what God did throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. He brought to human beings just like you and me opportunity to change and be agents of change, growing with the right fuel, sent ones on his behalf. Do you feel fresh wind today? Or is your life getting too stale and predictable? 
I would encourage all of you when you walk into the sanctuary on a regular basis to think about what you're doing. Sometimes we just go to the same seat that we sat in last Sunday, right? That's like a thing to do. We don't sit up front. We sit in the back. I can tell that already. (laughs) We come in with the same mindset, saying hi to the same people, expecting to sing hymns and hear God's word, come to communion, and then we leave and we get gobbled up by this world. This is a day of fresh wind, and I would challenge myself, I'm going to challenge you, to think when you leave this place today, that for the rest of the service, you meditate on how things are going to be different in your life when you come into that relational moment with God, which is a 24-7 moment, 365 adventure, and you allow God to bring fresh wind into your life. Second thing that I see happens on Pentecost Day is fire happens. And it's not fire that consumes, it's fire that illumines, that brings light into presence. It lights on the followers as if torches of fire are lit on top of them. And it's bringing them the fuel that I talked about before. And they are seeing things clearly. You know what it's like to walk into a dark room and all of us take for granted, don't we? We just flick the switch and the lights come on. This is a moment where God wants to turn your faith into an illumined environment where he is present, lighting each one of us up, helping us grow, helping us have the right fuel, helping us to consider being sent ones to see things clearly. Have we been seeing in the dark too long? Has the fire of Pentecost burned in our hearts, or are we being burned up by other fuel? That's a good question, because the world's going to offer to you an opportunity to use your resources in so many different ways that are not ways of God. And oftentimes, we spend so much of our energy leaning into those moments. Having the right fuel, the right fire matters. Well, I'm not going to tell you who it was in my family, just to not throw anybody under the bus, but it was years ago that I remember being called, dad always gets called, my car won't start. So I went out onto the driveway and I turned the key and it was sputtering. And and so I said to this individual in my family, uh, where did you get gasoline? I could could see that you're fuel gauges on, on uh, full, where did you go? And I was thinking maybe uh, the gas had some water in it and uh, something was infusing problems for the engine. And this individual told me they went to the station we always went to, uh, but it looked like a new product and the new product was diesel. <laughs> I said, that's diesel. I said, this is not a diesel engine car. You cannot do that. You know, if you take fuel that's not supposed to be in this human vessel and put it in there, you know what happens? Sin, estrangement, craziness, brokenness, all the things that drive us away from God. When you put the Holy Spirit's fuel inside of your vessel, great things happen. But it has to be intentional. You can't just walk up to the door and say, it's locked, I'll walk away. You need to allow the Holy Spirit's presence every day to help you to grow, to bring you the right fuel, and to call you into being sent ones. So on the day of Pentecost, there was fresh wind, there was fire. There were also moments where people were speaking in different languages. I find that one quite intriguing for us today because the church tends to speak the same language all the time. And if you come into the walls of the church, you hear the language. You expect the language. And you and me, inside of this church, we're comfortable with the language. But we also know, by the statistics, there are too many people outside our walls who don't understand our language, don't like our language, and they get offended by our language because we're not speaking and communicating clearly to the generations that need to hear it. And I believe this might be the most pointed call on Pentecost Day, on this day in 2024. 
The church we would awaken to not just speak the same language inside of these walls and expect for people who don't know, as we are called to be sent ones, that language, that we may speak the truth with creative ways, with new opportunity, helping to understand people's lives that might not be like ours. Because there's one thing that we do know that God proclaims he wants 100% of the people he created on the face of this earth to come to him. And in order to do that, if we're to grow and have the right fuel and be sent ones, we have to have the right language. We can't get frightened. We can't enclave, hunker down in our bunker and kind of hang here. We have to break the walls down and go and welcome other people into this place who may not worship on a regular basis or even have a relationship with the God of salvation. Bring the good news in creative ways. Have new language as you take on this day of Pentecost. And finally, as we hear fresh wind come in and feel fresh wind, as we see fire that we can use for God, as we move forward with new language, allow for transformation to happen in your life. For the transformation lingo of the Holy Spirit is vivid and vibrant and filled with life. And there is no human being that's sitting in this room that can check all the boxes of having everything right with God. For God wants us to learn and to grow and to be transformed. I think the big question that I would ask you, has God become a hobby to you or is God your passion? Is the relationship you have with Jesus Christ a hobby that you just do on Sunday morning and kind of move on, check the boxes, or is Jesus Christ a living being in your midst? Is the Holy Spirit who you lean into to grow, to know how to live life with the right fuel, to be able to move forward as sent ones? When we allow for the Holy Spirit to permeate our lives Great things happen. For God is the God of new life. And so as difficult as this may be, maybe some of you are thinking, I can't do this. It's just way beyond me. I don't know. This is uh, faith, uh, you know, 801 instead of 101, and I don't know how to get there. A simple way to do it, but a powerful way is when you wake in the morning, pray a prayer, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. When you're going into a business meeting or a test at school or, or you're struggling when you're pulled over by that police officer, just pray, come Holy Spirit. When you're struggling with your neighbor and you don't know what to do because they're driving you insane with all the stuff they have scattered all over their yard, come Holy Spirit. When you're trying hard to figure out how to deal with the IRS or the government or the political scene, come Holy Spirit. And praying that prayer, God is going to do what only God can do because Jesus does proclaim that with people, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. There is not a vessel in here today on this Pentecost day that God does not want to change and rearrange and help to grow and bring the right fuel and there is no one in this room that is not sent. That's not something you can point and say, well, they do that, I don't. Go out and think about the people that you might go to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Think about the people who don't have a relationship with God. Invite them in. We'll speak the new language. We'll bring fresh wind and God will invite us into this wonderful jet fuel environment filled with life, living our best lives for his kingdom's gain. Let's pray over this moment. Lord God, we give thanks for this day, a day when your Holy Spirit comes fresh and new. May we not lock the door, Lord, but open it wide. We give thanks in the name of Jesus who promises the advocate and who makes good on that promise. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.